Okay, we're back. We're live at the 11 o'clock hour. I'm Jay Fidel. This is uh, Coronaville. We're talking about for Trump, COVID is a blessing. That's what he said. It's a blessing from God, I quote. <clears throat> so that's, that makes for an interesting show. And I think I'm going to do the whole show with a, with a fly in my head, if you don't mind. Um, just, <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's all the fashion right now. <laughs> Anyway, so let's let's talk about uh, you know the, the hottest news that I've seen lately, and it's not exactly on Coronaville, but it is on these times in which we live. Um, it's the uh, it's the kidnapping, the kidnapping in Michigan. Uh, Tim, are you familiar with that? Can you talk about it? It just happened today. Yeah, I just was reading it before we went on, and um, you know they, the FBI, FBI have charged six individuals with uh, conspiracy to kidnap the governor, and um, my, my initial reaction is, why are we surprised? Because Donald Trump really fanned the fires uh, for groups like that to take action. I mean, it's almost like he, he implicitly endorsed things like that um, by saying that they're in a, you know, in a, in a lockdown you know, state. And I, I'm just not surprised that it, it's, it's occurring, but I'm disappointed that they probably took uh, encouragement from the words of the president of the United States to do something crazy like that. Yeah, the army, right? Referring to the army. Uh, and it happened before in Michigan. Michigan seems to be responsive to these dog whistle suggestions that he makes. Uh, really extraordinary. And by the way, it's not six anymore, it's 13. Uh, and one of them is on the run. Uh, but they have 13 people involved in the conspiracy. Uh, and they, as far as I understand, what happened is they were going to um, um, they were going to kidnap her. They were making explosives. They were going to attack uh, the state, the state uh, legislature building, state capitol, and they were going to try her uh, for uh, treason, violating the, their view of the Constitution. We're talking about madness here, and we're talking about you know, madness uh, encouraged uh, by the president. Uh, Stephanie, what do you think? Do you know about this? Yes, and um, that I thought, well, 13 at least, because they tied up with a mission, a that they wandering around thinking, oh, well, maybe we don't really have enough people according to NPR this morning. And then they just, that's when they ran into, I guess in the dark of night on the street in the alley, a militia group. So it, it could be more, but I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm terrified, appalled uh, at the danger that she was in and, uh, and what recourse is there. And I believe this is all about masks, the mask mandate. Yes, what exactly. that's what they're angry at her about. They think that her order requiring masks is a violation of their constitutional rights and they want to try her for that. And this is for treason. And then they would have a reason to shoot her. I mean, or worse. Well, God knows. I mean, see, the thing about it is there'll be weapons. Cynthia, don't you think there'll be weapons? These guys, you know, love weapons. They're going to carry weapons on their assault on the state legislature. I mean, they were going to, uh, the FBI, to its credit, stop them. Um, but, you know, if they carry weapons, what do the police do? Do they also carry weapons? Of course they do. And now you have a shoot them out at the state capitol, what everybody's been waiting for. Thank you, Dr. Trump. What do you think, Cynthia? Well, I think it started with him when he said liberate Michigan, right? And I think it was more than just a mask mandate. I think it was the lockdown more than anything else. And the, the intelligence so far shows they intended to overthrow the state government, not just kidnap her and try her. They intended to take over the entire Michigan state government because they thought it was unconstitutionally. Yeah, um, there you go. So Winston, is this the kind of thing that could play out in other states or is it limited to Michigan? I think it's reasonable to say that there's always been this strain in America of these sorts of groups. They just haven't been fanned and encouraged by the, uh, had their, their flames fanned and encouraged by a sitting president. Uh, that's where the real danger is. But hopefully he will take this opportunity to come out and say, this is a horror. Don't expect it. Don't hold your breath. But, uh, you know, the good news is that the FBI was functioning exactly the way that it should have. They're probably following hundreds of groups like this across the country. Uh, they have 
as much information as they can. Unfortunately, these uh, folks do exist. Uh, their their solution is one of violence and and chaos. And uh, fortunately, uh, you know our 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 system worked, and I think it will continue to work. There's always going to be fringe lunatics out there, but we mustn't mistake them with the overwhelming majority of good people in this nation who have nothing to do with this. Yeah, but it's a confluence, a confluence of events is going to the um, election day itself. And, and uh, I suggest to you that uh, this will happen elsewhere. Uh, there'll be more of this and there'll be more dog whistles from him because um, arguably he's, he's decompensating now. Let's talk about the debate last night. Tim, what did you think in terms of COVID anyway on how they did in the debate, uh, Kamala versus Pence? Well, I think she had to state very directly, and she got that right off the bat, that no administration, no presidency has ever failed greater than this administration on, on the way that COVID has been handled. But before I go in further than that, I just want to draw one parallel to what Trump said about you know calling out um, his army to go to the polls and uh, make sure that the ballots are not being a uh, su uh, suspect. And, and for me, that call was exactly calling on groups like this that you know, wanted to kidnap the governor, um, those kind of groups. That's, that's who he, he implored, you know, made his, uh, uh, his request to, is those kind of groups. And I find that really dangerous. And I hope that uh, he, he sees the light of not trying to stir those folks up to make the election day a, a nightmare. Yes. But anyway, let me get, let me get back to your your question. And as I think uh, Kamala Harris did an excellent job on pointing that out that th there's a dismal failure with COVID and how this administration has handled it, and particularly the fact that Donald Trump knew very early on in late January the deadly nature of COVID, and he knew very well that it was more deadly than the most you know uh, virulent flu. He knew it wasn't a flu. He knew it was much more deadlier, and yet he chose not to say a word about it. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think she really, she heard him on that. But, um, you know, it, uh, he, he presented, he presented uh, Trump's case, his position. And I think the base liked that, even though he was full of lies. Um, but Cynthia, you know, they say that, that uh, Kamala, you know, does better, did better last night with, with women um, in the country. And that's a big part of the electorate. And uh, Pence, uh, not so much. He's, he's not appealing to women. Uh, I, I, I don't know enough to know how this looks through the eyes of a woman, but can, can you speak to that? I can. He acted very misogynistic in the sense of talking over women, not respecting women when they tell, like the moderator, a woman tells him to stop six times, one of the times she had to do it. She had to tell him, you know, excuse me, Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you. Six times she had to say that. They know when they walk in the door that when the moderator says thank you, all you get to do is finish your thought. You don't get to keep going on and on and add new thoughts. And he did that with every single question. And I stopped counting lies at 30, and we weren't even 30 minutes into the debate yet. Yeah. What about you, Stephanie? How do you think the moderator did? I mean, you're, you're a moderator here on ThinkTech. We all are. Uh, how would you have handled that? I mean, she would say thank you, and he would ignore her, blow her off again and again and again. Could you have stopped him? What would you have done to stop him? Well, I, I think she was trying mightily to not have to get uh, loud. She didn't increase her volume, and she continued to be pleasant and, and courteous, courteous. I was a little shocked that he was quite as aggressive as he was. That didn't suit his, his uh, uh, usual stance and, and the way he started out being so gracious about Kamala. So I, I was, there were a lot of mixed things going on. And as far as the moderator, I think she did a pretty good job because he did, he did do what Cynthia said, but she called him back. But still, Kamala lost a couple of, you know, half minutes there. I mean, that adds up to 30 seconds or so. It's very unfair. So yeah. the other is I think that Kamala, I think she's trying to be all things. So, you know, she's a tough prosecutor, but she also was pulling this kind of like cute smirky look at him, like when he was lying, she'd do that 
you know, like thing. And I think that, um, you know, as far as the gender things concerned, I just think for the role and everything, I think she ought to drop that and not, not do that kind of thing. I know it signaled to the audience too, like she knew he was lying and he was looking at her and he, he and there's a whole bunch, but I just don't think it suited her. She needs to be more the Elizabeth uh, Warren, you know, blast him, man with her. Okay. Well, Winston, how, 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 what's your reaction to how Kamala did? Um, should she have been more aggressive, less aggressive? And what would you, this is a combination question, what would you as the moderator have done to stop Pence from rolling on uh, for minutes at a time? Well, first, I, I, I think that the, the winner in this debate yesterday was America. Um, it wasn't either of the candidates. I felt like we could, that, that this is what was the normal debate should look like. I'm not sure that they got into any topics that were, were there was nothing that shifted anyone's opinion, but it did prove to folks that she would be able to ascend to the presidency. That was the most important thing that she did is she showed herself as a competent, reasonable, um, thoughtful person. I agree with Stephanie that um, the looks were uh, great for the base, but uh, that she needed to be a little bit more holding his feet to the fire and just um, but she had a hard, she has a hard thing to do. As many people have pointed out as a black woman, she has a double standard there that she can't be seen as shrill or as, uh, you know, whatever it is. And that, I think that's, that's true. And Mike Pence did interrupt her many times. It's been pointed out. She also interrupted him. Neither one of them answered a lot of questions directly. That's what we expected. But I felt after this that he was positioning himself for really 2024 or beyond, and uh, that his his performance uh, and, and the fly um, actually normalized things to a point after last week, which was such a disaster, and it showed us a vision of where we can be as a people, where he said, look, we come together. I thought the answer about that the last question from the eighth grader was, we come together, we debate passionately, but at the end of the day, we're all Americans, we're in this together. So I thought it was very important for him to do that even though his beliefs and his training and his significancy for uh, the, the current president are well known, I thought it was a, a, a positive step in the right direction for bringing our nation together and setting up the stage for a, uh, a transfer of power. When yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But you, you didn't mention anything about the lies. Uh, the lies. Well, of course, it was it was it was filled with lies. And uh, there's some really great articles uh, out there that that deconstruct those exactly. But uh, and I don't know that I answered your other question, which was how, how what would it, what would be different about Kamala? I don't know that I would have changed anything. Her her looks were fine, but she, um, yeah, she could be like uh, no. Like my Steph, my other question, like was, uh, my other question was how would you, as a host here on Think Tech or as a moderator, in you know in, in that environment, have stopped him from interrupting her and going on for minutes and minutes after his time was up? That's a, it's a really hard question. And I think that the moderator last night did a much better job, obviously, than, than Chris Wallace, but she wasn't dealing with Donald Trump either. She was dealing with a man who at least is, is, has been part of the system. So I don't know what else she could have done except maybe uh, I do. increase I do. her voice I and say, Mr. President. Like I'm interrupting you right now. Yeah, Mr. Vice President, Mr. Vice President, Mr. Vice President, Mr. Vice President. Mr. Vice President. Mr. Vice President. Mr. Vice President. Continue I mean, interrupting. And I mean, you would get nowhere with it for exactly. as long as I control the moderator. And I would exactly. say, Mr. Vice President, I'm sorry, I am the moderator. And here I am the president. That's so exactly up. right. And she could have done that. And uh, I think she did it to some degree of effect because the more she said it, the more all of us were aware, like, you're going over. And I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't listening to what he was saying. I was curious uh, as to how many times she was saying it. So the right. effect was so he lost same. ground that way, didn't he? He yeah. lost a lot of ground. So I think yeah. she was effective in what she did. And she also brought back this thing that says, you both agreed to these ground rules. So for me, it was, you know, of course he was, Doing what our mansplaining and uh, and and going over the, the the limits, but it seemed to be in a reasonableish way that we're at least somewhat familiar with, rather than the off the rails you insane thing from last so week. You are so kind. You are kind. I am too kind. It's true, and I do not want to see Mike Pence in elected 
office or on media shows spouting anything. All I can say is when you when you said that he was vying for you know 2024, it's just a very good thing that I have not had lunch yet. That's just well. Well, you know, I mean, that's what he's doing. He's realizing this one's a lost cause. He's trying to position himself as the evangelical wing of the yeah. ancient Republican Party that maybe somehow rudimentarily exists somewhere, but um, it's not. That being happen. the case, I'm, I'm taking off my fly. Okay, I, move I, it to I, the other side. I don't know where it is. Where is my fly? <laughs> it's, it may have to stay there. Okay, I'm taking off my fly. It's no longer fashionable. All right, Tim, let's let's shift gears to coronavirus, okay? So he's back. If in we business. must. <laughs> if we really do. Well, he's back in business. He made a huge gaffe yesterday in terms of the politics by by saying he was terminating and like he has the power to terminate discussions between the two houses of Congress. That's really extraordinarily dictator. Um, but, you know, where are we today? Is he OK? Is he having a relapse? Is he is he going for a relapse? What about the debate? You know, he dropped out of the debate because they said it was be virtual. Is that does that work? Does that wash? Can you talk about it? Uh, well, first off, who knows what we know? Come on, they have uh, hid. They have hidden all sorts of information about you know his status of testing. They've hidden the X-rays, the CT scans. They have overtly um, covered this thing up. No contact tracing. Uh, for all we know, Donald Trump has been the spreader of COVID. Not you know he's blaming everyone else. Um, he's blaming Gold Star families as his uh, source of infection. He he blamed the Hope Hicks is she likes to get hugs from the, um, you know, from the police and Secret Service uh, personnel. So he, he initially blamed her. And I mean, who hasn't he blamed except perhaps himself? So, I mean, I don't know where we're at as far as what the truth is with his, his medical status. Um, I don't think we'll ever truly find out. Could he be a subject to relapse? Absolutely. Uh, once they start taking him off the steroids, who knows how this thing may kick back in. Um, as far as him going to a debate, uh, in person, oh, I would highly recommend against that. I would, in fact, if I was Joe Biden, I'd say, um, no, thank you. Uh, you. You know, what kind of message do you get to send as president of the United States that you're above and beyond uh, health law and, and the uh, common sense rules of infection? Uh, I would say, no, I, I can't do it. You want to do a virtual debate? I'm on. Yeah, now, so what, now he's going to do a rally instead on the 15th, you know. Uh, so uh, what about that? Comments on that? No, it's ridiculous. Again, for the same reason, uh, you know, you're just sending the wrong message as you have been for the last, you know, uh, eight months about not wearing masks, not testing, not doing contact tracing. Um, you know, it's just one one thing after another as far as the wrong messaging for how we combat this pandemic. You know, I mean, I suppose Trump could make is making the argument. It's my business, not your business. I'm not going to tell you my personal thing. It's like his uh, personal finances. Uh, uh, and he feels he can, you know, strong arm anybody, stiff arm anybody about that. But does the public, how much does the public have a right to know about this? What can the public know? Can they know every test he took, uh, every moment he had with every doctor? Uh, how much are we entitled to know about his disease? I, again, if, I'm, if I'm you talking are, to Cynthia, you've sorry. you got the nuclear football. Oh, pardon? I'm, I wanted Cynthia to answer that. Okay, sure. There you go. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't even realize. Um, well, actually, as the president of the United States, he lives in a goldfish bowl, and we get to know everything about him. That's the way it is. Every president in the past has done that, and it is a time-honored tradition that should never, ever stop. Because our, our future, our daily lives are, you know, they, they land on how healthy or unhealthy he is. Okay, so I want to really answer this with a quote from the New England Journal of Medicine that has just recently come out against Donald Trump. It says, our current political leaders have demonstrated that they are dangerously incompetent. We should not abet them and enable the deaths of thousands more Americans by allowing them to keep their jobs. This is unprecedented for the, a, a medical journal to come out like this. Um, and I recommend everybody to read it, the whole thing. This is just a small, you know, clip from it. Um, it's very enlightening and it really talks and speaks to his response to this and his response to his own case of it. Yeah. 
So Stephanie, it sounds like a lot of people are turning against Trump right now. Can you say why? Uh, is this a trend we should be watching in the next few weeks? Uh, and does it mean anything in terms of the election? You know, I think that um, they're slowly chipping, climbing off, but they're very, very tentative. Because look at him, he got the virus, serious, enough to ride the helicopter, and he's back. It's like the ending of that movie with close Glenn Close, where, you know, you think she's gone in the tub. <laughs> no, the monster is never dead in these really good sci-fi movies. So I think that people are still very tentative because it, it also reflecting the, the, the drama of um, the degree of malice that was in his threats to get in line. So we're, I think we're seeing some reflection of that too. But anyway, that some of them are also, you know, going to stay with them through the way. But um, I, I would have expected people to be back, be off, more off by now, away from him. Or, but it, it's just going so slowly because I think he's got such control over them and is so threatening as a, a bully can be. Well, maybe, maybe we're just at the beginning of something. You know, people don't want to spend time with him in the White House. They don't want to catch it. And the White House is all wor working from home now. That's what I read. Um, and so what, you know, what we have is uh, a government that's not quite functional. Winston, you know, how is this working? Do we have a government that works here? Um, can they make decisions? It was bad enough when Trump was you know, in the Oval Office making all the decisions. Now he's the only one in the building making all the decisions. Um, how can this government function? Well, it's a good question. They, uh, I read, I was reading something about, are his tweets considered to be authoritative? Are, are they orders, in fact, when he orders Bill Barr that, that Joe Biden should be arrested? Well, or, let, me, let, me, let, me just, let me just interrupt to say, you know, remember what he said. He said he liked this, uh, this uh, special treatment he got. He thought it was really miraculous, a blessing from God. Um, and uh, he was going to, he was uh, going to save the country. He was going to make it available to everybody free. And now there's, there's a uh, fantastic statement. Do you think that will ever happen? Well, considering uh, there's a story out earlier uh, today that says if all Americans got the same level of treatment that Donald Trump got at People Magazine, it says it would cost the average American more than $100,000. So I'm going to say no. Uh, what we need to focus on is common sense things wearing a mask, social distancing, vaccine development, uh, washing your hands, the, the basics. Uh, you know, even uh, the, I, I thought it was a little bit ironic that the Surgeon General out here got ticketed by uh, the police for not wearing his mask at, um, at I think it was a cool um, park. But that aside, yeah. okay, that don't, was don't, don't make, don't put me on that jury. Well, and, you know, it was an anomaly. Uh, I get it. He won, he was, and but I think that uh, what Donald Trump is doing here, when Americans are reading that he's putting his Secret Service agents at risk for joyrides uh, around the hospital, that he's declaring himself cured, that he is the only one that's going to save us, all of these just ridiculous things, they're looking around and saying, you know, he, he just, he might have been the super spreader disease that then sent this to thousands of people across the um, uh, the country with the Amy Barrett Rose Garden event. So I think people are waking up a little bit more and saying, you know what, this is not the chaos, confusion, um, insanity that we need anymore. We need sane adults that are not corrupting our uh, medical. I, I hope you're so. I hope you're true. You're you're right about that. So Tim, you know, we touched on this yesterday, and it's um, it's this whole thing about um about what, what the world thinks of this and, and uh, whether the world would you know, take advantage of our government not doing anything. Um, you know, my, my view, uh, as you know, from the beginning of Trump is that he hasn't done anything. Um, he's, he's done all negative things, all 180 off, all wrong way, Corrigan. And, and if you ask me whether the country would be better if he had never been in the White House for one moment and done anything, I would say, absolutely. We would have been better off. Are we better off now? You know, in a sense, he's desperate. He's desperate to show his base a few things or two, uh, to be back in control. At the same time, fact is, he's not doing anything. Fact is that we, we are an opportunity for Russia and China. Uh, are we safe? That's my question. 
think we're safe, but I think immeasurable damage has been done to our reputation worldwide. I think um, Russia feels like it has a, a free play in our politics, either in this election or moving forward. I think um, our relationship with China has been strained. And I think our relationships with Europe has been horribly strained uh, with NATO and you know, all, just pulling out of all the Paris um, environmental agreements and the agreement with Iran, we haven't been a nation of our word. And your credibility, once your credibility has been damaged, it takes a long time to rebuild that back up with your allies and your friends. And uh, it's good if Joe Biden becomes the next president, it'll take him minimally one year to send out a, a, an army of, of diplomats across the world to say, we're really sorry for the last four years, and we'd like to show you something different on how a real administration um, acts in the world stage with its allies and partners. You know, I, I, I sent you guys, just to, for reference, a copy of the Gelman article out of The Atlantic two or three uh, weeks ago, and uh, it continues to frighten me, petrify me. Um, and there's a, a long way to go from here to um, a new president in office, perhaps longer than we can imagine. But I want to get a snapshot from all of you. I want to go around the table here and, and consider all the things we've been talking about. You know, um, what happened in Michigan, um, the debate, how it came off and how it might have affected people, uh, his COVID and his remarks about blessings from God and his arrogance, his total arrogance in, in uh, reporting on that and uh, failing to take any steps even now uh, to, to limit it, you know, the, the contagion. Incredible. Um, but what I really want to know is, is uh, given all the things in the Atlantic, you know, which could screw up the election big time, post office is only the beginning. Uh, how do you feel right now about the election? Are we on the right track? Uh, can you feel a level of confidence? That you think the polls are going to be the ones that, you know, that, that dictate uh, who the next president is? Stephanie, why don't you start? Take, take half a minute. Well, I'm really... Uh, I'm glad that you brought up the international situation, the threat, because that's one of the things that we're not paying attention to. And these are unguarded moments because, again, all this shiny object stuff, very serious things in addition to shiny objects, but even more serious than that is our vulnerability. Now, as far as I'm concerned, man, we could be hit any minute. The foxes are outside the hen house slathering over this opportunity. I mean, we could be taken down so bad, worse than 9-11, worse than anything. So um, I don't stop thinking about that for a minute and get a little bit upset. You know, they're going out there checking on Red Hill um, for all of that, uh, all the, the storage of the of uh, gasoline, whatever it is, gasoline or anyhow, energy to run the Seventh Fleet, right? Well. They're saying that, I said, why is anybody even talking about? They're going in to check the Red Hill storage containers for, to protect us from, I mean, the people could come in here and bomb that sucker and the whole island would go. Well, and don't forget, uh, you know, cyber terrorism. Okay, uh, Cynthia, what, what are your thoughts here? You know, the three weeks out, um, how are you feeling given all of these various factors that we, we, we four, five, whatever, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, have been talking about. Um, what's, what's, what's on your mind? Well, I'll tell you, you know, I've been working on trying to put together some of our past Trump weeks and compile them together. Um, and we've been talking about this stuff on Trump week now for like two years. And don't forget coronavirus too, a coronaville. <laughs> yeah, and so, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Um, and so here, but I mean, it comes over to this and it all comes together in the same way because Trump is at the, you know, he's the one that's at the crux of all of this. So we're not going to be able to get out of this. And even if Joe Biden wins by a landslide is sat on January 21st, is it? Or 22nd, 21st? 20th. No, 20th. Okay. Um, <laughs> I believe that if Trump knows he's going to be leaving, he's going to do everything he can to sabotage Joe Biden's um, term, which means he's going to hand us over to the highest bidder that's going to attack us and make Joe look bad. Okay. And so I don't think our, our fear should end, and I mean, and our trouble will end on January 20th. 
regardless of who's in office. Thank you, Cynthia. Okay, Winston, what about you? How are you feeling? Don't tell me you're optimistic. No, I'm feeling a little optimistic, Jay. And uh, the reason is, I would I remember I did last week too, I said, I don't know why, but I'm feeling optimistic this week. I think that America- maybe it, was, maybe it was just gas. It could have been, uh, but you know, I, 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 uh, I'm feeling like Americans, even though I said nothing would move the needle with them and his supporters, I think that those ones that, that, that whatever the mythical five, six, seven, eight percent, it's bigger than that. It's normal people who felt who they believed the myth and then suddenly they watched his performance a week ago and they thought, this is horrendous. I can't, I can't do it anymore. I can't put up the pretense of saying he's great for America, he's bringing back whatever. They just have given up. And you saw these massive swings in people who are seniors in across the board. Even when Rasmussen comes out with their poll where he's 10 points down, this is all hope that America is regaining its sanity and its sense of itself. The debates last night that were saying were a sense of hope for the future. Arresting these folks for uh, uh, in this plot for Governor Whitmire also shows that this very dangerous element has been rogue that is intent on just destroying the system, not just a person. And so I think all of this, any, any normal person can look at this and say, you know what, I might want change, but it doesn't come about like this. And this yeah. candidate has led us down a path, or this president's led us down such a wrong path that we need to change course here. So I think that the polls, the people are voting, it's there's going to be some chaos, some confusion, certainly, but we are going to come out of it. And as Stephanie thank, thank said, you, our Mr. work is not over on thank the 20th you, of you, January. Thank I think thank it will continue you. as yep. we go yes, through the next year. We got, it. We got that. We got the message. To our thank nation. you very much. I'm optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> was, I'm speaking. Tim, you, <laughs> you, can I follow this? Oh, Lordy, How can I follow this? Delicious opportunity to wrap all this, you know. Reclaiming my time. Very, you're finished. <laughs> uh, well, you have the opportunity to wrap all this together and tell us how you feel. All these factors, you know, and it's you know, the number of variables in this universe that we talk about. It's like if you started counting them, there would be dozens and dozens of things. So can you try to put it all together? I want the fly back on my head now. Um, number one is I'm optimistic for two reasons. One is I think the vote, not only in the swing states, but the non-swing states, even possibly Florida, may, may go into o Bi uh, Biden's uh, his column. I, I'm really optimistic about that. I'm also optimistic about what the polls look like against a lot of these Senate races. And I'm optimistic that maybe the Democrats do take the Senate. I'm very concerned that Donald Trump in his magical ways can uh, manipulate uh, those swing state um, GOP states that somehow he gets them to just ignore the popular vote in that state and somehow rig it for the electoral college and uh, manipulate it in such a way that he gets very close to victory or even potentially, unfortunately, takes victory. Yeah, lots of variables. It's, um, it's, a, it's a world to discuss, not only during the Trump week show and the Coronaville show, but <laughs> as you know, all week long. So let's keep on exchanging ideas and articles and references and, and um, you know, talking about it in our respective shows. Thank you so much, uh, uh, St Stephanie Dalton, Cynthia Sinclair, Tim Apicella and Winston, Winston Welch. We're all done now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.